Good afternoon. I'm Joe Lafergi, live in Paw Paw, where the funeral services for Lieutenant Ethan Quillen, the Paw Paw firefighter killed in the line of duty 10 days ago, are about to get underway. Again, it was February 22nd. The lieutenant responded with the rest of his crew to a down power line just outside of the village of Paw Paw. Another power line came down unexpectedly. It was electrocuting the 28-year-old. We've learned uh, some things about him this morning that we didn't know. He is actually born in Australia some 28 years ago. During the service, we will hear the eulogy from Paw Paw Fire Chief Jim DeGroff. We will also hear from a family member of the lieutenants. Uh, several fire departments from throughout Michigan are here. Uh, they had visitation that started about 10.30 this morning. They have lined through to pay their respects. And afterwards, the service, which is expected to last about an hour, the procession will leave the high school here, head west into the village of Paw Paw, where the community is expected to line the streets to honor the lieutenant, their fallen hero here in Paw Paw. There's also expected to be a very moving ceremony in front of the Paw Paw fire station where the lieutenant's turnout gear, his boots, his helmet, his coat, and his personal pickup truck that he drove to so many fires will also be on display. We're talking about a lot of community uh, support here, not just from the community of Paw Paw, but from neighboring fire departments. No emergency calls will go unanswered over this uh, next day or so as uh, several local t township, village, and city fire departments from throughout Van Buren County have volunteered to come in and fill in in the station in Paw Paw in case there is an emergency. They will be responding, giving the firefighters, some 40 strong here of the all-volunteer fire department in Paw Paw, some time to grieve, some time to collect their thoughts, some time to, to catch a breath because it has been very difficult for the department over the last 10 days, losing one of their own in such a tragic event. So uh, community fire departments again from all over coming in to try to help the department cope and make sure the citizens are safe as well. We talked to Sheriff uh, Dan Abbott of the uh, Van Buren County Sheriff's uh, Department earlier today. He told us that uh, this loss has really impacted just about anybody who wears a badge here in Van Buren County because they all work together. The sheriff's officers, the local police officers, the local fire departments, as we mentioned, they all gathered that are together in these emergencies, work together very well so when one of them is lost they all feel that loss they also realize that it could have been any one of them that was caught up in this tragedy uh, so it's, it's very emotional here we expect a very emotional service again expected to last about an hour and we now take you inside the Paw Paw High School Performing Arts Center for the service
On behalf of Katie and the entire Quillen family, we thank you all for being here. None of us want to be here. All of us are hurting. And so we gather to deal with all the emotions. We gather to mourn, and yet at the same time, we gather to celebrate that Ethan is now in his eternal home a home that was established for him thousands of years ago by his Lord Jesus Christ. And so thank you again for coming. Thank you to the firefighters who have gently and lovingly made this moment possible for all the first responders, the police, the EMTs, the military, the family is grateful. And so as we begin, I want you to understand that this is no longer a public school auditorium or overflow in the gym. Today, this is a sanctuary. Because as we celebrate Ethan's life, as we lay him to rest, we invoke the presence of his Lord Jesus Christ. And so this is an hour of worship. So I ask that you join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, the Lord Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. The Apostle Paul said, For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. And with that knowledge, Lord, we gather today and we're hurting. We gather today to say goodbye to a husband, to a father, to a son, a grandson, to a firefighter, to a Marine. He carried all those titles. And we pray that as we remember Ethan this day, that it will bring honor and glory to him. But more than that, may it bring honor and glory to his Lord, Jesus Christ. This we pray in your name. Amen. The Papa Fire Chief, Jim DeGroff, will share the eulogy. something worthwhile with my wife. Those are the words, those are the words that Ethan used on his application to our department. Those words speak volumes about the type of person Ethan was. He proved his passion almost immediately. When he was answered, when he answered a single question during his interview in 2019, he was asked what type of compensation he was looking for and he responded with, I want no compensation. I just want to serve my community. These were just, these were just not just empty words to him. 
He was truly dedicated to what he believed in and his passion for firefighting was honorable. He quickly moved up the rank and began serving as lieutenant on engine 1201 in 2022. He was dedicated, loyal, trustworthy, honest, and always ready to do what needed to be done. As an example of his leadership within the department, he would often take the younger members under his wing, teaching them the ropes. Recently, during a saws and jaws training session, one of our junior members was struggling with a task. As she was getting pretty frustrated, Ethan pulled her aside, told her, open the cabinet, get the pill bottle out, and take a chill pill. <laughs> he lightened the mood, and he stayed with her, helping her with the saw. And now every time frustration sets in, she hears his voice telling her to take a chill pill. He always found a way to be calm, to be, he always found a way to be a calming voice to others while showing his leadership. Not only did he become a firefighter in 2019, he also became a husband, marrying the love of his life, Katie. Just a few weeks after he joined our department, we have watched him grow as a husband, and in 2020, he became a father to a beautiful little girl. He would always keep everyone updated on her progress when she was in the NICU. And when she came home from the hospital, he was ecstatic. He always had photos of her on his phone, ready to proudly show them off at a moment's notice. Once she was able to figure out a phone, he had her on speakerphone all the time and would be just, just to talk to her. It was nothing to hear little giggles or screeches or laughter coming from his phone. He would often hit, hear pitter-patter of little feet and giggles coming from his pocket. She was a shining star in his eyes, a bright spot in his life. His family meant everything to him. We have so many stories about Ethan. I could go on and on, but I have a few that just made, made us laugh when we were reminiscing about him the other day. Ethan was taking the fire academy in October, and he always wanted to drive. He did not like other people to drive because he said, Things always went wrong. Well, one time he decided it would be okay to ride with another firefighter. And on the way to class, the truck he was riding in broke down three times. <laughs> and oh boy, he was not happy. He said he would just drive from now on. After a ton of teasing from the members and Ethan driving to class many times, he decided to let the same colleague drive again. Different vehicle, so what could go wrong, right? The car was a convertible. There were three members going to class that day, and the car didn't have room with the top up for all the stuff to get put in. So they put the top down, piled all their gear and air packs into the back seat, and with the gear, and the firefighter riding in the back seat, off they went to class. Enjoying the top down on a beautiful sunny day, now we all know Michigan weather. And when class was over, the temperature had plummeted. And it was Ethan's turn to ride in the back seat. The problem was the top broke and wouldn't go back up. Ethan came back to the station swearing he had hypothermia <laughs> with his lips turning blue and he vowed never to ride with someone else again. He would always drive and he always did. Ethan was a joker 
and always had something funny going on, it seemed. He found a small pink dinosaur toy at the scene of a training fire once. It was covered in soot. He picked, he picked that toy up, crating that toy around the station and placed it in different spots in the trucks to see who would find it first. Eventually, put, put it in, putting it on his helmet band where it remains today. As you can all, as you all can tell, Ethan rocked a killer mustache. He was so proud of it. He would always have a glue stick with him and it had to be Elmer's purple glue. No other glue stick would do. And if you saw Ethan, you saw the glue stick. Even though he was a prankster, sometimes the joke was on him. We were all at the station one day and a stranger came in, came to the door and handed us Ethan's gear. They said they found his gear laying in the middle of M40 Highway. Apparently, the gear was wet and he had hung it on his truck mirror and forgot about it hanging there when the fire tones dropped. He jumped into his truck and took off with the gear still on his mirror. It had blown off and landed in the, in the road. He never did live that one down. He got picked on a lot for that. He had a more serious side to him too. As a member of the honor guard and a military man, he was very particular about the look of, of the uniforms, especially the hat. He was a guy that the younger honor guard members turned to to make sure that the hat was just right. He would check that hat using the two finger to nose techniques and adjust it if needed. He made sure the hats were just right and the hair was just so. Ethan didn't have any family members on the department when he applied. And our department has a long history of many generations being firefighters. However, he and his family acclimated quickly to the life of a volunteer firefighter. They didn't complain when family meals were cut short or when he would have to leave holiday events or cut a birthday party early because of fire calls. They didn't bat an eye when he would be gone for long hours fighting fires only to return home and have to leave again for another family in need. There, there are many people out there who can't comprehend our calling to be firefighters, but Ethan did. To quote Dennis Leary, once you have a firefighter in your family, your family and your, your family and the family from his crew become a big extended family. This could be not more true. He was our brother and our friend. The sorrow that we feel when we lose a loved one is a price we pay to have that them in our lives. We will always have a scar in our soul, an open wound that will never heal. But we can fill the wound with memories of love, friendship, comfort, knowing he died doing what he loved, what he had a passion for, for doing what he was dedicated to do doing something worthwhile. To Ethan, your family supported you and your passion. And now it's our turn to support them. Your family is our family. Rest easy, brother. We will take it from here. Thank you, Chief. When we struggle, when we mourn, God's word 
comforts. I have two readings today. One is from Psalm 46. It says this, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. He makes wars to cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear and he burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Sharing family members uh, memories will be his cousin, Cy Taylor. As Cy comes up, uh, take note that Ethan mentored more than just firemen. Cy has a mustache that uh, Ethan taught him how to groom. As the fire chief said, um, he always had his glue stick. And uh, the first time he told me about it, I said, there ain't no way <laughs> that a glue stick is holding up your mustache like that, bro. And uh, I tried it once. I said, all right, this kind of works. And then I tried it again today. And uh, sort of sticking up there, but uh, I've been smelling glue all day, so I don't know how he did it. <laughs> don't know how he did it. Well, I'll keep this as short as possible, and I'll just stick to my paper here. <clears throat> Before I go any further, I just want to say thank you to everybody who is here in the room today. And everybody who is in the gym or wherever you are watching on screens. Um, the amount of support that we have seen from everyone is honestly very overwhelming. I don't have very many words for what it has felt like to watch this community rally together, to give financially, physically, and emotionally to Katie, to Logan, and the rest of our family. I've been blown away. And so again, I just want to say thank you very much to all of you. Ethan clearly made an impact with the way that he lived his life. The proof of that is right here today, everybody in this room, everybody here. Whether you knew him personally or just from afar, we are all here today because he touched our lives in some way. Ethan is my cousin. Many of my earliest memories are of us mostly from hanging out and playing games at our grandparents' house when we were children. Grandma and Grandpa would often take us down to what we knew as the dime store and give us each some money to get something. Usually it ended up being matchbox cars and Legos, which we would then go back to the house and immediately start building. 
We grew quite a collection of cars over the years, many of which are still in a container at our grandparents' house. My brother, Ethan, and I would each choose a, a section of the house, and we would set up our, our home base. And then we would set out our cars, we'd all pick our cars, set them up in our little makeshift garages, and then we'd go to town in our imaginary world that we created where we were race car drivers, lumberjacks, military personnel, and all other sorts of wild things that our little brains could come up with. It was always an adventure. As we grew up, my memories become more of going to baseball games and wrestling matches. I never did fully understand wrestling growing up, but I knew it was always fun to watch my big cousin flip people over on the mat. In turn, he would also come to my baseball games as a kid. I was never very good, but having your family cheer you on even when you suck is still a pretty good feeling. <laughs> I've always looked up to Ethan. For the longest time, I wanted to follow in his footsteps. When he left for the Marines, I was so convinced that I was going to do the same thing. And I even told some people that. And although that isn't the way my life ended up going, I've still always been the proud younger cousin of the service that he gave and continued to give until his last breath. From our love to the movie Cars, which is arguably the greatest animated movie of all time, no debate. <clears throat> Watching him ride bulls at the rodeo, looking at the tractors at the Allegan County Fair, giving me uh, wise advice on women, <laughs> helping me with tips for my mustache, and just talking about the things of life. Ethan has always been there. In the last few years, I've watched him become an amazing husband, an even greater father. No way, I took some notes, so one day I'll, I'll be good. He lived a life of great integrity, always helping people out, always serving others without any benefit of his own. He was the best friend, cousin, son, grandson, husband, and father to his family and to his friends. He leaves behind a powerful legacy and some fairly large cowboy boots to fill. In the middle of this mess that we are walking through right now, the thing that brings me comfort and peace is knowing that he is with Jesus in heaven right now. And one day, when my time comes, I will get to see him again. And I pray that this same comfort and peace covers everyone in this room. Whether you believe it or not, God is in the middle of all of this close to our hearts. But until my time comes, I'm going to do my damn best to be the best friend, best cousin, best son, best grandson, and one day best husband and father, just as Ethan has been to his friends and family. Thank you. Ethan was a part of many families. His immediate family of Katie and Logan, his extended family, which included his parents and grandparents, aunts, uncles, so forth. He was a part of a family known as the Marine Corps. And as you heard Chief say, a part of the firefighting family. Both the firefighting family and the Marine Corps have special prayers. And to read and pray the firefighting prayer is Greg Straka. Please, would you please rise for the reading of the fireman's prayer? When I am called to duty, God, wherever flames may rage, give me the strength to save some life, whatever be its age. 
Help me embrace a little child before it is too late or save an older person from the horror of that fate. Enable me to be alert and hear the weakest shout and quickly and efficiently put the fire out. I want to fill my calling and to give the best in me to guard my every neighbor and protect his property. And if according to your will, I have to give my life, please bless with your protecting hand my children and my wife. Thank you. You may be seated. Representing the Marine Corps and praying the Marine Corps prayer today is uh, Staff Sergeant Brian Lee. And just to show how much Ethan was loved and appreciated by that family, platoon members from all over the country have come today to give him honor. Let us, let us pray. Almighty Father, whose command is over all and whose love never fails, make me aware of thy presence and obedience to thy will. Keep me true to my best self, guarding me against dishonesty in purpose, in deed, and helping me to live so that I can face my fellow Marines, my loved ones, and thee without shame or fear. Protect my family. Give me the will to do the work of a Marine and to accept my share of responsibilities with vigor and enthusiasm. Grant me the courage to be proficient in my daily performance. Keep me loyal and faithful to my superiors and to the duties my country and the Marine Corps have entrusted to me. Make me considerate of those committed to my leadership. Help me to wear my uniform with dignity and let it remind me daily of the traditions which I must uphold. If I am inclined to doubt, steady my faith. If I am tempted, Make me strong to resist. If I should miss the mark, give me courage to try again. Guide me with the light of truth and grant me wisdom by which I may understand the answer to my prayer. Amen. We're here to remember Ethan and to celebrate his life. And we're all aware how difficult that is because his life was cut short. And we've heard some of the things that we remember about Ethan. And if you walked through the main entrance, you saw some of those things. We remember things like his baseball caps, which he abused folding the bill in half, literally. We remember things like all those cowboy boots. And of course, we remember his mustache. There are many things that we remember, but all of them are kind of the outward stuff. Earlier this week, some of Ethan's fellow firefighters gathered to support each other. And they shared stories and some laughter and some tears. And one of the firefighters stood up at one point and said, God has a plan. We might not understand it, but in the end, it will all make sense. God knows the big picture today. And often in tragic situations like this, we ask the question, why? But that question is unanswerable. We will never understand. We will never know why. But today, perhaps a better question 
is not why, but how. How will this tragic death of someone that we loved impact us moving forward? How will Ethan's life change our lives as we move forward from this day? So forgive me, but today I, I, I'm not going to talk about the boots or the hats or even that awesome mustache. I'm going to talk instead and focus on the fact that Ethan, as Chief already alluded to, dedicated his life to service, to commitment. He loved and served so many different families. And folks, that's his legacy to us. As Sai said, he, he wants to be just like his cousin. We need more Ethans in the world. There's a very popular book from a decade ago called The Purpose Driven Life. As you open the book and read the first line, it says, it's not about me. Well, folks, I believe that sums up who Ethan was. It wasn't about him. He loved and was committed to many things. And what gave him the strength to focus on those things and others in general is his, his life verse is found in Philippians 4.13. Many of you may know it. I can do all through him who gives me strength. I can do all through him who gives me strength. That him is Jesus Christ, who gave him strength to show his love of country by becoming a Marine. As a child, his mother, Sharla, shared with me that, that Ethan always wanted to be a firefighter. But as he got older, he added to that wish list the de desire to become a Marine to serve his country. And maybe that's part of his legacy, a love of country. The Marine Corps motto is Semper Fidelis, Semper Fi. It's translated to mean always faithful. Imagine if everyone in here, everybody watching at home, everybody in the gymnasium watching, imagine how different this world would be, this place would be, if we were always faithful. The core values of the Marine Corps are honor, courage, commitment. Ethan personified all of those values. He made the world a better place. He loved his country. He loved his community. And again, as Chief read his application, it was that love that called him to serve. Katie shared with me that Ethan fought fires before he was a fireman. You know, they, they met online and on their first date, using Katie's words, didn't know a lot about him yet, but wanted to make sure he wasn't a creeper. <laughs> and, and so on their first date, they are driving down the road, 
and there's a gentleman with a truck on fire off to the side of the road. So on their first date, Ethan pulls off to the side, parks the car, and goes and puts out the fire. What creeper does that? <laughs> he wasn't a creeper. He was living out his core values, others. Anyone needing help, Ethan was there for them. That's who he was. That, too, is part of his legacy. We can learn from that. Again, we express our thanks and our appreciation to, to all of the first responders who are here because in you is, is part of that service orientation that love for community. Ethan loved what he did. He had a great love for family. He was so committed to serving Katie and Logan. And at church, it was so fun to see this rough and tough fireman this Marine just melt in the hands of a three-year-old. Logan was daddy's girl, and we all knew it, and we all loved watching Ethan, so tender and loving. Wow. We can learn from that, too. He, he learned that, I'm sure, from his parents, from his grandparents, from those who surrounded him. We can learn from his life. An example of the love that that family has, the family made it possible for Ethan's godfather to come in from Australia. His dad, Dean's best friend, became Ethan's godfather. Many of you may not be aware that Ethan was born in Australia and they immigrated here when he was young. But what family does that? Makes it possible to bring someone halfway around the world to be here to love and support family. That too is part of his legacy. On the night when that call came for Ethan to go out, he stopped and he kissed Katie goodbye. And the promise of her holding dinner. And he went to leave and he stopped at the door. And he came back. And he held her and kissed her once more. What a legacy. What a practical example that we can learn from. Who in your life right now, today, needs you to come back for an embrace or a kiss or a kind word? That's a practical legacy that all of us can take from this place. And it will honor him and his memory. Ethan loved his family. He loved his church. From a very young age, he was service-oriented even at church. The last memory that most of our church members have of him is that the Sunday prior to his tragic death, Ethan, his parents, his grandparents prepared coffee time 
following the Sunday morning service. We do it every week, and they served us. So our church members remember as their final memory, Ethan serving his church family. Now, please don't misunderstand. Um, There is no halo. We all know Ethan had other sides. I talked to the youth director that was in Uh, in charge when Ethan was in high school and she shares the story of Ethan running into the church building and saying, Cindy, Cindy, you didn't put your car in park and it rolled into the youth building. And so Cindy gets all flustered and together they they run outside to look and see and yes, indeed, the, the car was not in park because a certain young man put it in neutral, and then push the stinking thing into the youth building. Cindy's word to describe angelic Ethan was a rascal, because he had that side to him as well. Very human, and yet very loving and caring. Those qualities, I'm sure he inherited from his parents and his grandparents. Love, commitment to country, community, church, and to his family. All these made possible because of a much earlier commitment Ethan made as a child. And that choice, that commitment, was to make Jesus Christ his Lord and his Savior. That's his final commitment. To Jesus Christ, that commitment served as his anchor. When he became a Marine, his mom, Charlotte, was a bit nervous, shall we say. And Ethan said, and I quote, Mom, don't worry about me. It doesn't matter where I'm at. It's up to God. The Lord has control. I'm in his hands. And because of that commitment... Ethan is now in his arms. Because he believed the words that we hear so often of John 3.16, for God so loved Ethan that he gave his only begotten son so that Ethan, who believed in him, have everlasting life, would not perish, but have everlasting life. And maybe that's his final legacy to each of us. A legacy of faith. A legacy of commitment to his Lord. Ethan wasn't perfect. But he was forgiven. He believed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, he lived life to the fullest, fulfilling those dreams to become a Marine, to become a firefighter, to ride bulls. What dreams? John 10, 10 says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Well, folks, know that Ethan lived life to the full. Probably never forget the hat. Probably never forget the boots. Definitely will not forget the mustache. But beyond that, my hope and my prayer for each of us today 
is that we will not forget his legacy. And that we will make a conscious choice to live out love for country, to do things that show that we love our community, to show our love for family, and to live a life dedicated to his Savior, and I hope yours, the Lord Jesus Christ. The hat, boots, mustache made Ethan unique. But the legacy and the anchor in Jesus made Ethan who he was. So more than just remembering the challenge for each of us today is to carry on that legacy. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are here and we pray that if there is one or more who perhaps do not know you, that they might adopt Ethan's legacy and choose you. Thank you, Lord, for everything in Ethan that was good, everything in Ethan that we will remember with great love. Thank you, Lord, that Ethan is now with you. And we pray that as we move forward, that you will comfort Katie and Logan, Sharla, Dean, the whole family and all of the myriad of friends. Give us strength to carry on. Give us compassion for one another. Thank you, Lord, for a life well lived. Thank you, Lord, for a legacy that challenges each of us. Be with us now, we ask and pray in your name. Amen.